the start of his career when he was playing in Malaysia. Then he moved uh, to to the off lane when he joined Kick Gig. And he played off lane for what, one and a half years, maybe two years. And then he went to uh, play carry in Mineski for a couple of months. I think it's like three, four, five months. Went to then after that he went to China and he went back to off lane. He's been everywhere. Uh, jack of all trades. Oh, well, you have to understand Dota, you know, to play all the roles. He's he's a he, he's a very smart player. When I was working with him, he he picks up what you're trying to tell him. Quick, like anything you're trying to teach him, he can absorb it very very quickly, faster than normal players. He has a pretty good attitude towards the game. And we've seen him perform really well with this IG team. We've seen him perform well quite a bit the last few years. Uh, last year, not so much. But I think starting on this year, he when he played carry, I wasn't too big. I don't think he was a good carry player. Offlane was okay, uh, his best role. But because he plays carry, right, so it helps him understand what he can do in the offing. Like he knows the matchups very well. So he's very good at the, the laning pace. So let's see if he knows how to do the Sumia combo. Like Invoker against SF, uh, I watch a lot of like Sumia games. He always beats uh, SF in, in the... Because he can always kill him in his combo. You mentioned the combo as we saw the Invoker yesterday. Cold Snap, Tornado, Meteor, GG, dead. I think it needs, you need to have full mana most of the time to do that combo. <laughs> Sun Strike to secure the range creep. Yep, very, very, very nice. I think it should be like level 4 or 5 before the Invoker can kill the SF. Like right now it's all about like trying to just get the last hits and get the extra null talisman so he can... Oh, he's actually going Rift Band. Uh, so you can cast your spells. Uh, you have more mana to cast your spells. I don't expect uh, much to happen right now. Both of them don't really have much kill potential on the other until they have more levels. Six apiece CS. A bit even, but at the same time, two denies there. Yep, for the, the denies are, the denies are what is going to be crucial for Shadow King and even in the Invoker. Like that level advantage, bro. Nicely done. The Invoker knows he's going to pop level 3 first, so he runs up the high ground, trying to do that extra damage on the lane. And he went into that level 2 of Exhort. I think we saw that with the Invoker yesterday. It was like a 1 1 2 build. That uh, that the invoker went to. Yeah. So you can kill the. It's just mini for the tornado, so you can, you can kill. <laughs> so, so far, Shadow Fiend is starting to. Pull ahead, CS wise, 13 and 5 to the 7 and 2. Only level 1 in the Necromastery, so full on souls. Cold Snap comes in, JT. With the Cold Snap disrupting XSS, who. Disconnected. Uh oh. He. I've, he's dead, right? How, how does he get he's out of this? He's very fire. He's very fire. Solved. Um, He'll be fine. He's fine. Everything on cooldown for the Invoker. Oh, he needs more stats though for mana. Invoker has no mana. He didn't send mangoes. Didn't even need to pop the uh, the fairy fire. Gets to keep the two damage. <laughs> so he's a okay. And that looked like a, a rough spot to be in, and 
taking a look back at it now that we knew he disconnected it. Uh, seems like a situation that uh, he DC'd in. But now... Okay, as so, so the mangoes are coming. The invoker has killed threat on SF now. Oh, he went for a double quest? What the heck? Alright, so I don't think he can... I, I, I don't know, like, you, you can't really... It's very hard to kill though, without the tornado. You need to like, run up. Like, the way you're killing right now is with the Ice Wall. Ice Wall and Cold Snap with the Forge Spirit. With this build. It's a lot harder. Then goes in, oh. Forge Spirit there. JT taking a lot of damage. Cold Snap isn't going to be enough. Looks for the raise! Oh, very, very nice. Uh, he's really, really good at the lane. Man. Knows his uh, limits precisely. I don't know if he... He didn't call GG. <laughs> you really wanted that raise. Could he have cold? Uh, could he have just right clicked him, or was the cold snap disrupting him too much? No, I can't. Yeah, the cold snap. But right clicking has a higher chance of uh, landing compared to the sh the race. But I don't think he would have died though. He had fifty HP, so I don't think he would die. That would be one right click. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Okay. So that technically went to IG, not Aster. Um, JT won that one. As we saw, he got the kill. XSS maybe a little salty there. Just leaving. Was he the one who said he just w woke up? No, JT. Oh, it was into a just woken up JT. So pick priorities there for IG. We'll be back at the best of three in just a moment between Aster and IG. Stay right there. We'll be back hopefully very soon. I mean, the Marana has been picked 10 times in the last seven days. So, very popular right now. TA band as well as the Void Spirit. Vo we've seen a lot of, you know, a lot less priority on banning that Void Spirit. I feel like it's been kind of not as uh, prioritized to use the same word twice. It was a first phase ban for a while. Um, into a first pick if it made it that far, but it's seen its ban or pick and ban percentage kind of drop, or at least in that first phase, drop by, by a lot. So IG chooses to ban TA, which mean that the Morphling has a chance of uh, going mid still, because they don't want the Morphling to run into a TA matchup. You don't want to play Morphling against that. Slark. Very interesting. Not really the most flexible hero here. I mean, like I said, you you want a hero that can deal with the, the arrow, like some dispel, and also they should have chosen Slark. Or I mean, me yeah, I personally would have preferred like a Rave King, but I'm not sure if Rave King and Morphing will be viable. But even Slark and Morphing is like these two heroes are both win condition heroes to a certain extent. Maybe for Slark. Certain players view I, I I know this because they the Slug players have told me uh, that sometimes they feel Slug is a supporting core. He's not exactly a win condition, you know. He's like an Ember. You run around and you kill stuff. So you prefer be one another hero like an OD in the game to carry and secure the game for you. Is that recently though? Um, because we used to see Slark very heavily prioritized, and it seemed like the win condition core like a, a month or two ago especially when the ags was a big deal uh yeah during that time yes but after that after they nerfed the hero then he doesn't feel like a very strong win condition hero so for asana what is the solution to deal with this morphing and slug you know, od could be still a decent option here od does well against slug does well against morphing does well against centaur i mean they still go for the pl <laughs> Uh, PL against uh, Morphling is nice. You get to burn his mana. PL against Disruptor is nice. You can dodge the glimpse. But PL doesn't do well against the Centaur. Centaur is a good hero against PL. But apart from the Centaur, the rest of the heroes, uh, PL would be fine against them. 
So looking at the lanes, Shadow Demon PR against Centaur Rubik. Centaur Rubik will be happy with that lane. Unless Dyer decides to try lane and leave the Brewmaster alone. I would actually take that trade, to be honest. You think about it, Ben. A poor Brewmaster and a poor Centaur, who do you think suffers more? Who is more useful with no money? Uh, Brewmaster is useful with no money, yeah. I would feel. Yeah, because you're more of a buy on Zolt, right? And yeah, for Centaur. If, if I'm dire, I would, I would want both the offliners to be poor because it's better for me. I'm glad I got that question right, though. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's quite uh, quite just quite straightforward there. Like Centaur needs a lot of uh, resource, so that's gonna be a good trade for for the Brewmaster. I'm not sure how much uh, uh the teams sometimes consider this year. It's like uh something that you don't really think of initially when you're placing your lanes. You're more about thinking how can you get the most out of it. But like I always like to tell you, right. Sometimes it's better just to be happy that like breaking even or having a draw instead of trying to win all the lanes. At the moment you try to win all the lanes, you put yourself uh, at risk of losing more lanes. You have to be contented with what you have sometimes. I go lane, yeah? So again, Brewmaster is safe. They want to pressure the morphing or the slug because they are both terrible in the try lanes. So let's see where. Oh, well, actually. Were you, set, were you setting overlays? Were no. you doing overlays? Uh, was just making sure all the sounds were on and everything. Sometimes I get super nervous and have to check everything once again. Ah, uh, you're like my. Always <laughs> double check, triple check, double check. Check, 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 check. Uh. <laughs> I also was wondering, because we've got the the emo on the Slark. I, I really thought this was going to be uh, Fly Fly on the Slark, just because that's one of his better heroes. Slark is the support call this game, bro. Mm -hmm. Morphling is the boss. The win condition. He is the Grand Slam champion, if you will. Hmm. Try lane. Brewmaster top against Rubik Center. This is good for them. What, what Dyer is doing right now is good. As long as they have a try lane, this is great for them. And it brings over Kaka. Try lane so against try lane. Ali and Kaka here. I mean, yeah, there's the fable of one, thank God. I feel like if we saw Telkinis, I'd be a little bit upset, but Kaka taking a lot oh, of damage no. in first blood is here for SCCC. Very quickly. He has no TP. He, has he just no TP, TP bottom. Oh boy. He tries to block the arrow for his buddy. <laughs> uh, bad move. Really, really bad move. But, uh, Ben, remember I tell you when you're on second pin, you should always consider going aggro to, to fix the weak silence. So, this is what they have done. Being on the second pick team, going for a try lane with this Mirana. Oh, this hero is getting better and better the more I see this hero. First pick hero. Is yeah. there anything you can't do with this hero? It, it seems like it just does everything you need it to. Especially with, when it's got setups, like this lineup does. Searing Chains, Disruption, Wind Panda. I don't know if that's a setup, but I would still count it as an unreliable setup. Toss him in the air, Dispel. It just, it's been a hero that has definitely been a game changer in just about every game it's been seen in. Yeah, to be honest, I would say that Ember is the uh, best hero to set up the arrows. Low cooldown, like very reliable low cooldown disable. 
So right now Morphing is still uh, able to last hit, so you see what both sides are doing. Trying to pull the wave, uh, Dyer is pulling this wave and trying to... Oh, he didn't body block the pull camp. So Radiant's gonna get the pull off, but the, uh, the Disruptor is in trouble, yeah, he's gonna die. And they'll have the setup for the arrow. Firefly eats the arrow for his support. I think that's the most selfless thing I've seen a carry do in my entire time casting, and I know that's such an over-exaggeration, but... <laughs> <laughs> Usually the carry's like, all right, my sport died. That's cool. Whatever. Fill up my bottle. Yeah. Or fill up our mid's bottle. You haven't been looking at the top tier carries, mate. They're selfless. Carries, carries value their supports, you know? Your game hinges on the support. I mean, it's just like a company, you know? Your revenue is going to come from your staff. Your staff is your most important asset. And he ended up going for the waveform on the Morphling, something we talked about yesterday, I think. Uh, it's just that whole day was a blur. Um, but we it's saw... Better in a tri -lane. Yeah. You want to have wave in a tri -lane. You don't want to have the adaptive strike. So here, so Dyer is getting this pull. This is crucial. He's trying to get the wave back. And another disrupt. Arrow going to be blocked by the neutral keep. So this lane, what do you want? You want magic sticks as soon as possible. I see one on Morphling. I see one... I actually see no sticks on the two supports. Kinetic field. He has no doppelganger. Arrow incoming. And the arrow Whoa. hits though onto the Mora Fling, and this is a problem with Fade having that Soul Catcher. They get the kill on a Fly Fly. They look over at Ali. They've got the leap forward. They'll get themselves a second, maybe even a third. Obika oh, doesn't have the an arrow, but nice. the leap block. Ooh. Uh, nice. And he's still looking. He's got arrow. Arrow. Uh... Huh. Blind arrow? Why, why wouldn't he even try? He didn't even try. I'm surprised. But holds he it for now. He doesn't want to give away, give away the ward, maybe. Oh, morphing waveform, trying to snipe the courier. Take revenge of his fallen courier. Disruption incoming. Block the arrow, thank you. <sighs> Keeping Kaka you alive. Here? Keeping the staff alive. I mean, here. The supports didn't repay the morph when the arrow was coming right in here. Oh, it's Disruptor's fault. He didn't block the arrow. He forgot to repay the morphling. And now this lane seems get, to really become they a get struggle. The pull. Don't worry. They get the pull. This is very, very crucial. And how about top lane? Santos should be doing better. Yeah, this lane. Santos happy. And mid lane should be Slugs that's, that's winning. So Raiden is winning both the solo lanes because of the. just due to the matchup. And the trial lane is being won by Dyer. So far. So it, actually, this is this is how, how the game should be going between the first pick and second pick. This is precisely how the lane will go. When your first pick, you'll win two lanes from the side lanes. And when you last pick, you're going to win the mid lane. But in this case, it's a bit different. But overall, it's still the same. Two lanes to the team that has uh, first pick. And bounty runes. Bounty runes, another arrow. No one's going to block the arrow for you this time. I'll get the kill there on Alia. This is, again, just the presence of the Marana that we're feeling. Fly Fly, it definitely feels a lot better as a Morphling once you get that level 2 in the attribute shift. But... It, it's just, this lane has got four kills already. All four kills have come bottom. Four assists for Bobica on this Marana. Having a fantastic game. You've got two kills here for SCCC. And this is a Morphling that... It's only... 500 gold behind the Phantom Lancer, but it could uh, get top worse. Lane. Top lane. Here we go. Uh -oh. Arrow. And they've got themselves oh, the Cyclone. <laughs> There's the arrow. Slams him down, and with the Star Storm, they should have this kill. XSS getting the I last mean, I shot I didn't on. expect it to happen so quickly. I was just kidding about the possibility of that happening. And <laughs> the first split, it happens. Wow. And Bobica's everywhere. This is uh, classic Bobica to be in every lane, it feels like. Hey, wait, what? They switch, yeah. they switch roles? Boboka is on me right now? Yeah. Well, maybe just this game. I don't know if it's a switch roles or anything. I'm not certain because obviously we've seen that Esther's been struggling. So I, I do wonder if Fade's going to go back to the 5 because he was the 5 when he first came to the team. And Boboka was the 4. They struggled with that. And then they made Fade the 4, Boboka the 5. And I don't know if they're going to swap again. It's more like Fade is struggling as a 5 before. That's why he got swapped out to a 4. But how dare you take the 4 role with Boboka on his team? 
How dare you? He's showing already but why you should have the roll. The 4 and 5 doesn't really have much difference to be honest right now. It feels like you have a... Uh, you do the same thing and here comes the slot. Emo oh, doesn't land his uh, leash. Uh, I've got the disruption, they look over at SCCC. With Schwam making the rotation, Arrow, Arrow comes in. Oh wow, hitting onto the Sark, but he's got the dark pact. Glyph oh, oh, out glimpse. onto the got Ember. Glimpse. Ember got Glimpse. Yeah, the glimpse works. I think I said Glyph, but Glimpse ends up pushing away Schwan and saving the Sark. Because I think with the Ember still there, Emo's probably dead. <laughs> Don't worry, they popped their Glyph. <laughs> Five minutes ago. Oh. <laughs> The sadness in that <laughs> oh. oh, arrow missing. Fly, fly. Still getting pressure. Bobica just wants to stay in the Morphling's face, and this is uh, Morphling swapping with Emo. Wait, the slug is uh, after the rotation. The slug is uh, behind the Ember Spirit. I mean, they are e even. But Centaur is the biggest uh, winner here. Even after dying once, uh, to the he's still on top of the net worth. He's gonna finish his. Oh, he's rushing pipe to deal with the Ember Spirit Mirana. Interesting. Very interesting. And the Vanguard is definitely gonna help him more in the laning phase and to deal with the Brewmaster split. So seeing him rush the pipe, like he's gonna. If he buys it, he's gonna get it like around 10 11 minutes. Emo missed his pounce again. Hmm. It's a hard spell to land, pick up. Very, very hard. Mid though. Yeah. Wi Fi. Four points in Essence Shift. Oh my god. Do you actually need four points? I mean, Why it's do just. You need four points? The difference is just the duration, right? You're gonna farm like a tortoise right now. Hmm. I mean, I mean. The second point is like uh, the most I will go. Sometimes I will go three points, but I never, never want to go four points. This time he got the pound switch, but it won't matter. Very, very strange, uh, going four points. Outpost time. Countdown, 40 seconds. Despite it being 5-0, I mean, the net worth isn't too far out of hand. Uh, SCCC, and I would... Hmm, the Morphling is pretty far behind. Oh, doesn't land the arrow. Oh, no. Oh, you should no. still have this kill, though. One more shot is all they need, and they'll get it from Bobica. Uh, but because they, they missed the arrow, they are not able to run over here to get the outpost. I don't think they have enough time. Maybe badly. They need, like, Can they four seconds if it's two people Sento. on it. Go stun him, Centaur! Stun! Oh, he ran! Oh, he really, he, he should have just like camped here on the fog. And then when they go and do it, he should just go there and disrupt him. Stun him. But he might die for that though, because the brew has split. So overall reasonable, reasonable option there not to risk it. He's a very big kill. Not worth going for the outpost like this. I felt like I there could have been potential value though. Ah uh, no, no. Down he's, the he's, he's too big. He's, he's too big of a kill because he's so fat. Not worth it. Feeding is not worth it on the center. If you feed on the other heroes, yeah, maybe. And right now he is doing the best. You don't want to give up a kill, I guess. So as being the top of the net worth. Bottom emo. Double damage on an SCCC. The leap forward. The arrow. But there is a dark pack, however, Emo taking a lot of damage off the Star Storm. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Hmm. Which catapult is going to net them a tower? Let's look at top. Here comes the Rubik. Uh, don't think they can kill this panda. It's this panda is tough. annoying. He's got bottle, so he's securing, making sure he's, he's always got the final split. Bot. See, he kills the camp. This is really good. Kills the camp. He goes about to to play with his at bottom. This that is, is some aggressive positioning. They're gonna remnant forward. Kaka though ends up dead immediately. They'll get the kill onto one. Can they get more? Static storm is down here from the side of IG, but moving forward still is Aster. They're gonna pressure onto the tier one tower. They've got the cyclone out onto the center, so stopping him from helping out this team. They'll get the kill here on Ollie. Now they look for Emo. His Make spell? it a third. 
as the arrow comes in and they've got themselves potentially and most likely a plus one with all five heroes here around the centaur. He comes down from the cyclone. They've surrounded him, searing chains under the tier one tower. They just don't care because they have overwhelmed IG and made this 10 to nothing. Five heroes here. IG has only four. Morphing does not want to fight because he got slowed down. But then again, that fight was uh, actually pretty difficult to take because the dial was already ready and right then they were tipping. Uh, who were the last heroes tipping? I think it was... Uh, wasn't it the Centaur? The Centaur, the Centaur or the Disruptor? They came very late. I mean, on top of things, they miss the, the Static Storm. But I felt like the Static Storm being missed is not even like the biggest thing. You know? It was just like very difficult for them to defend the Tower. Arrow. Or nice. Arrow hits. Now they've got a lot of damage out on the Emo. He'll try to run. Starstorm comes in, leap forward, slight of fist, searing chains, and another kill on Emo. 11 nothing in favor of Aster. Roll swap working out wonders, man. And here comes the parade of the two supports of Radiant coming in. Kaka is still level 5. The Morphing's sleeping in to fight. Arrow. Arrow hits the Centaur. They look over at Fly Fly. Morphing's gonna try and put out some damage, but is it gonna be enough? They look forward, the Static Storm down again, but it's gonna miss oh, the entire no. side of Aster. Again. And on the back lines, Ollie and Kaka getting overwhelmed. Sidefist comes in one more, one more time. As they've got the Moonlight Shadow to disengage. They won't get any glimpse. plus one. Oh, no vision. Oh boy. Another whiff, Wi-Fi uh, though. Disruptor. They've got the disruption. Needs to be very careful. It's 11 0. As still no kills for IG. Uh, but the lead could have been a lot bigger though. I think the lead is like 11 for 11 0. 1k, 1.5k behind us is not a lot. Not certainly feel, and it, it went down. It was a 3k lead for Dire. So there was a shift. I mean, Rubik is still level 5. I He's getting caught here again. Mm. Oh, there's no arrow? Okay. He used it a little earlier. Was it on the creeps? I In think so. Jungle? Or he might have even shot one to try and hit it under the Rubik and missed. Defeasal finish for SCCC. Slark is waiting for his Shadow Blade. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Slark is supposed to have a much better game. But last two death really ruined his game. And here comes the Smoke. If he gets Disrupt, this might be his death again. Let the Shadow Demon walk in front. Ooh. Blink forward on the Ollie. A bit quick on the trigger there. I think maybe they could have gotten the Slark. <laughs> and it's fine. Losing the support. Three man smoke. Uh, Blink dagger reveal. That's totally acceptable. Uh, once again, uh, SCCC able to push the lane kill here. It is really nice. He knew his, exactly his limits. But you have to look at the timing, right? Whenever This is something I want to add on. You know the line I'm telling you? Yes. This is a good time to go past the line because it's bounty rune timings, right? You know the enemy team is uh, going to focus on going for the bounty rune. So he took a small risk here to push out of that wave and TP to me, you know? So it gives him like an extra wave of creeps and it delays the push from the catapult towards his tower. So he's able to arrive to the mid tower first before the top creeps are going to arrive on his tower. Just a small little detail. I know I always tell you it's that one extra wave you want to take that kills you. Know? And here, if the slug takes this catapult, he's dead. I'm not supposed to kill the catapult. Oh, he didn't pop Shadow Dance. Yeah, so he ends up getting locked down here by the Ember. They've got four heroes down bottom. Now he pops the Shadow Dance. Can he even get out? No. Shadow Dance will end. No Searing Chains, and he ends up dead. But top, maybe a tier two for uh, Radiant. They try to stay as long as they could. Kaka comes over, throws a Fable, as well as gets the Telekinesis out. But Kaka now they've dead. overstayed oh, their welcome. Remnant. Kaka has Remnant, actually. <laughs> Stampede, fly, fly, into the trees, Arrow. and oh, oh wow, great, nice. slide of fist. Nice, very, very nice from Dire team. They did lose the tower though, but Morphling didn't get the last hit. 
I mean, it's 14 0, so the lead has been building up right now. It's three, three k, about 3,000 gold. So Radiant is uh, still yet to find a move that connects uh, with the whole team. They have to try to land this Disruptor ulti. They have missed like two to three ulti so far. Lift into Disruptor ulti. Let's go. Oh no! Amber now glimpsed back, but the Static Storm is over, so he remnants away. Why can't they just wait? Radiant's bottom tower In the center, could have just blinked Storm after the lift. Shadows take us. They're not oh dear, this is, trying this is bad. to get a kill. They're playing, they're doing a different type type of thing. It's never been done in Dota before. It's the pacifism win. Where you get no kills, but you still win the game. So Kaka ends up dead, and as I finish that sentence, they finally do get a kill here on the Fae, the prop primal split. They look over at Ollie to get themselves a second. Disruptor's gone. JT now the focus. However, Fly Fly, he, JT was the focus. And then until Fly Fly showed up in between all of them and gave up his life. I mean, this is just like snowballing to worse and worse. Uh, Raiden is trying to take a good fight to, you know, get something back. But the Disruptor ultimates have been very, very costly. You know, those three miss ultimates have been super, super costly. I mean, they still have, uh, I think they still have a good shot of uh, winning a team fight as long as, uh, even though they are 5k behind, they can land a Storm on the Centaur Stomp or Lift. Rubik needs a lot more levels right now. He's way too low level. He's got double win ways. Glimpse? Can they land a glimpse into Static Storm? And they've got the Pounce Leash. Now the Stampede comes in. The Static Storm is there on both SCCC as well as Shuan. So they get the kill under the Ember. They look over at the Phantom Lancer. The Doppelganger just in time and now on the run. But Emo taking a lot glimpse. of damage. They've got the glimpse back. The arrow misses. And oh, I nice disruption it was, by yeah. FA. He didn't have doppelganger. Well played. Well played. He held that disruption too. He could have, you know, it was a lot of discipline to hold that for so long. Because there, there was moments in that fight where it's just like, oh, you know, SCCC, he looks like he's going to go down in the static storm. Disrupt him. And then they wouldn't have had that opportunity. Dyer's middle so very well done there by Fade. However, IG starting to pull back. 17 outpost. to 2. Secure the outpost. Hey, by the way, you told me you are on a 9 game win streak, right? Yeah. So what did I tell you that helped you gain that 9 game win streak? What, what actually, which part of the advice helped you the most? Paying attention to the map, uh, that line has been drawn into my head. Oh, so is the line? It was actually the line, the line. I think the line has really helped me. Um, I mean, I went greedy with that Wraith King and did do the skeleton damage build, <laughs> the double skeleton damage build, which ended up uh, I always, working. I always feel the line doesn't really work in pubs, you know. Because the other players are not using the same line, so yeah. what you're doing with the line is... Uh, the line only works if everyone does the line concept and you follow the what you su you're supposed to do, who's supposed to be in what position. Because usually in the pubs, right? Oh, and this guy oh. is it. Yes. Oh my god. Ollie just getting uh, obliterated there. Usually this this is the line, right? And the carry the carry likes to farm here, they are gonna scold you, yell at you. It happens to me a lot. They are, they want me they want this farm, but this farm is a dead lane, right? It's a very dangerous place. They're not supposed to farm there. And then they're yelling at you when you go there. As a support and you nuke the crit wave. I actually just do that because I know they're gonna die if they take the crit wave. So I don't say anything, I nuke the crit wave and they, they mass ping me. But they didn't know I just saved their life. <laughs> yeah, if only they could tell. And now, top disruption. And Kaka with the Soul Catcher. Tokinesis comes in, but he's got the Spirit Vessel on him as well as the Thunderclap coming through from the Brewmaster to get the kill. I think also just. Being in the right positioning really helped me. I help you read the static game. storm. Oh, storm. Well, SCCC. Nice. He's still alive for a little longer, but finally the static storm is on point to get that kill. As 
Bobica is looking to finish off Ali, but Fly Fly coming over the kinetic field is out. They've got the Sentry Ward down. They'll get the kill into the Mirana, and that's a three times three going the way of Fly Fly. So the Static Storm is back. They get like uh, two fights in a row on big kills. So I is back into this game. Right now, Slot has uh, Echoes while well, he went Echo Saber after Shadowblade. So the Diffuser still better? Hmm. Never mind. I guess he just wants the. I mean, Echo Saber gives you the mana region, which is very nice on a hero like Slot, because you need the mana region. And the double double hit is very good with the essence shift. And how about my our friend Malthing? What is he buying? The f infamous BKBs, you know. Don't forget to buy your BKBs. Lesson one oh one, CDA league. And look at who is on the line. This is the line. See, he knew. He know. Look at that. He cleared the wave here, and he, he waved and TP away. He knows exactly his limits, like where he should be farming. And had they gone a, a wave further, they would have died. Yeah, yeah the, the line actually, I tell you, you'll be surprised how much this line explains. It's, it's something that you do, uh, what's the word, subconsciously as a player. Like you don't even think about it, but when I explain it to you, you, you were like, oh, and everything becomes clear, you know. Sometimes you're not very sure why you die, and you're trying to figure out, but you're, you can't really find the solution to it. And then when you have this simple line, you know, man. So I will refresh your memory. The line means a dangerous area. Left side is Radiant territory, right side is Dire territory. If you want to go near the lines to farm, you have to fulfill two things. You need to be a, a low priority target. Actually three things. You need to be a low priority target or you need to be a hero that could, can clear the wave quickly. And number three, you can also clear the wave if you are a very hard hero to kill. Like Storm or Ember, those kind of heroes of Puck. If you do not fulfill those three criteria, please do not farm near that line. Thank you. Well, PSA action coming in is Kaka. The Spirit Vessel Telekinesis comes through into the Ember, but it doesn't look like they'll be able to save this Rubik. Jump forward, Star Storm's there, and we get the uh, the kill score we've been hoping for. Yep, he's in the line. He's a support. That's fine. He was pushing out this way. He gets caught. Not the worst loss this game. Uh, so what is the... Wow, the Ru the Disruptor actually took the, the stone, yeah? Instead of the Rubik. It certainly feels like Ollie at this point right now He's feels the fall. more important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rubik is the vibe, yeah. The Static Storm is just so important, so like, if there's a support that's going to die, it feels like the Rubik is the one that... Sh if you had to choose, All right, high ground. Could be the one. Who has the high ground? Who has the high ground here? Radiant. Moonlight Shadow. Sentries down. Blink as well as the Hoopstomp comes in under the Ember. They've got themselves the waveform as well as the kill with the Static Storm placed down on top of this brew. I believe he tried to get the brew split off, but was unable to do so. But finally, the Static Storm runs out. They get the buyback coming in from Shawan, and now they'll try to force the fight on the IG. Abandon ship. Abandon ship. Yeah, they need to just get away as the Centaur, though, he survives a little longer, ends up dead Morphling. here to SCCC. Morphling hit with the arrow! Oh, and there's the kill that, that onto was, Fly Fly. That was so weird with two arrows flying in. Oh. It's, this is Roshan for Dyer. Aster back in this. Back in the driver. Let's see, back in the lead. What did the Ember went for? Did he buy a use? He has a stop of wizardry and he's buying a BKB. Did he change his mind? <laughs> what the heck? Casual stop of wizardry? If you've never seen it before. I think he wanted a use initially, then he changed his mind. Why would I buy use when I can just buy the all important black king bar? That gives you damage, that gives you armor, that gives you HP. In Dota 1. <laughs> you know the BKB in Dota 1 is so OP. Wasn't it you could you buy a recipe to refill the charges? 
no, there's no charges. It's always ten seconds, and oh. it gives you. It's like it's like the you know the Warcraft Three Avatar from Mountain King. Mm -hmm. You play. Do you play the ladder? So when you pop BKB, you gain HP, you gain damage, and you gain armor. So it's not just a magic immunity spell. <laughs> it's a damage spell. <laughs> Whoa. That is uh, way you more know, than it is build, now. The build is you get mass of madness on, and BKB on most heroes. Because you pop BKB, you pop mass of madness, you kill any everything. And blink dagger, these three are the best items right then. Because blink dagger can, uh, cannot be disabled. You always have blink. So blink is the most broken item. Jeez. How long ago? So wait, that was Dota 1. How yeah, that long was, uh, into... Uh, wait, let me count. That was when I was still in high school, so like 13 years ago. Okay. I don't... Did you, did you even play Dota back then? <laughs> uh, no, I actually didn't start playing Dota till 2012. So uh... you're kind of new. In some yeah, ways. I would say. Yeah, actually, no, you're, you're not exactly new, but you are, yeah, yeah, you're not old school. And SCCC, and they run into the Oli. Arrow comes in. They've also got themselves the clumsy net to get the kill there onto the disruptor. And again, if you had to take one support to die, it probably shouldn't be the disruptor. However, you can see where IGR on the map. Why? Why it shouldn't be the disruptor? Look at the Rubik. Look at his net worth. He's richer than the Disruptor right now. Please stop patronizing the Rubik. Please. Please. Just the Rubik it, has caught Why'd you want to do anything? Even, it's uh, it got to be including that static storm. It's 0, 7, and 1 Rubik, but he's a position for his Kaka Bot. So Morphling has his... Uh, what did he buy? Uh, what did he go for? BKB up, so BKB is up on Morphing. Slug has BKB right now. Just needs to sell one of his uh, Rift Band. Go time for Radiant, double BKB. Centaur is close to his uh, Lotus Orb. Very, very important item when you're playing against Shadow Demon. You need to take away the Soul Catcher. Very, very important. He's the 100 gold shot, right? Hey, no, he actually has enough gold for it. What am I counting? I'm doing some NA math right now. <laughs> it's actually, he has enough. So they should be looking to smoke. Do they have an observer ward? Only has an observer ward. Like I tell you yesterday, you should always have an observer ward when you smoke. Bare minimum one, because vision is what wins you the position and the high ground when you're taking a team fight. So you can get a initiation that wins you the game. Just remember this, you know, it's a very bad habit to go smoke and don't bring any ups or you don't have any observer wards. I'll have to remember that when you I, can, uh... You can thank me next week when you come and tell me, oh, I have another 9 game win streak. <laughs> this this win streak's never going away. I'm going to win forever. Uh, I like the attitude. Alright, high ground, here's the fight. Radiant, hold your high ground. Hold your position here. Oh, oh they're running away. Their ward is here. Their ward is they've here. They've got the sentry, and now they've got the telekinesis out as well as the static storm down onto this brew. Side of fist, running away. BKB's been popped by Fly Fight, looking over his SCCC. XSS now, outside of the static storm, has the ability to go into the primal split. Is exactly what he's done. Emo getting overwhelmed by SCCC as well as Schwan and XSS. And this is Aster overwhelming the fight and looking to get some casualties here, but they end up losing Fade with the E Blade thrown from Fly Fight. They've got the Cyclone coming in from XSS. Three heroes around the Morphling. JT potentially looking for a blink initiation here with the hoof stomp. Phobica ends up dead. Two heroes gone on the side of Aster, but they get Fly Fly. Yep, I think this is actually better for Dyer, even though they lost two heroes. The fight just broke off in the two, you know, like the Slug and the Rubik were chasing the supports here, and the cause were fighting here. I felt like maybe if the Slug was here. I think the Morphing might have been able to uh, to win the fight with the Slark. Not very sure. Ooh, Slark but finding we... this brew. Without Primal Split. I don't think he can kill him. It's like, wait a second. He's trying to steal some stats. Oh no, he has... Does he have a TP to get out? Alright. I mean, you could see in the fights, right? Once uh, the BKBs run out for IG, they're in a lot of trouble. The P 
PL is just going to dominate the, uh, the fights once the BKB charges are done. They have to be certain that they take the fight together with the double BKB in one position. What they were doing was, I think someone was making the call, run to the ward here, because they had a ward and sentry here, right? So they know Dyer is all missing. And they were standing on this position, remember? They were taking the outpost, but they couldn't get to this position. I think if they were able to get to this position, the fight could have been uh, pretty straightforward for them if they have the high ground there. But they don't work out for Radiant, so let's see what can they conjure up next. Centaur is building an Aghanim, so I think this could be a tight turner here for Radiant. That's if Sparks he gets to butterfly. it in time. Yeah, I mean, he has time. I don't think the game will end any time soon. It's going to be the next Roshan. Slug is going butterfly. I feel like they have uh, the PL problem, you know? They need like some Radiance or some Maelstorm to deal with the illusion. Emo moving forward, looks over at CC, XSS, as well as this Shadow Demon of Fade caught out. No buyback. He has no buyback. Daya has to run. Doppelganger comes in, they got the Stampede on top of SCCC, they pop the BKB on Fly Fly, they laid down the Static Storm, but the Kinetic Field doesn't hold in the SCCC originally, but now finally comes out and holds him in for a second longer. However, they've already lost Ollie to SCCC. Remnants forward as Schwan is here with the BKB being popped. They look over at Fly Fly, he's stunned up, he's got the Lotus Orb on him, now the Pounce leashing up, the SCCC, he's getting low, not dead just Yo. yet, Doppelganger to leave, and Fly Fly with the Spirit oh, Vessel on no. him ends up dead to Schwan. And there's not much Emo can do to turn this around with SCCC coming back into the Vix. They look over at the Centaur, they've got themselves back. another kill, and down goes Emo. Four heroes gone on the side of IG. Aster coming out on top. I mean, you saw again the fight. Same story. BKB's running out. Uh, Dire PL just takes over the fight. He was uh, really close to dying there, but he was able to exit the fight, regenerate with the heart. Just come back after. Just very, very crucial. I think the Titan Sliver might have been also a difference maker there. Having the extra status resistance, allowing him to just barely survive. Just uh, clutch plays here by Esther. Double buyback. They have no BKBs yet. And they've got the Pounce leashing on SCC. Pops the Manta, Emo taking a lot of damage, pops the BKB. Now they've got the Telekinesis on an XSS, but Emo needs to try to survive and now run. Shadow Dance and the BKB now expended for this Slark as Aster continues to stick on the high ground. Blink hook stomp. Not really doing much. Emo comes back into the mix, but again, you gotta remember that he does not have that BKB right now. Nor does he have the Shadow Dance. Arrow flies in, and Flyfly just gets the BKB off. They've dropped down the Static Storm on an XSS, but they get the kill on the Kaka. Now they look to the back lines. As Ollie in trouble, Remnant sought down by Shuan. And they're, they're okay. They Use the buyback out onto the Rubik. One for the re-engagement again here from Aster. JT taking a lot of damage. He ends up dead. Shuan with the double kill. Looking over now at Emo. He's hit with the Spear Vessel as well as the Searing Chains to get the kill down for 100 seconds. And that should be GG and will be. As Aster, 33 to 8, take game 1. This is a complete turnaround from yesterday after losing Ocean. Turning point of the game, number one, it was the two uh, initial static storms that missed uh, in the game. But the first one was, uh, I feel like, maybe it's also not the best decision for Radiant to defend the bottom tower, because uh, Dyer was already well set up there. It was a very excellent uh, rotation. The Brewmaster killed, it was the first catapult. The Brewmaster made sure he killed the catapult in his name. The moment the catapult died, he tipped it to bottom where they still had a catapult to play with the catapult. And that resulted in a big win for Dyer. That was the first one. And there was a second uh, stack song that missed in the mid lane. Uh, then after that, I feel like the other thing I want to say is uh, I'm not very sure about the uh, if I like the Santos uh, item selection in this game. Because remember I told you uh, their draft, right? Their heroes don't really deal with uh, PR well, except for Centaur. But Centaur, he won his lane. Remember how fat he became this game out of a 1v1 against Brewmaster? But he chose to rush a pipe out of everything. And by rushing a pipe, uh, number one, you don't really have a lot of mana to work with at that stage. And I feel like uh, at that point, the Ember wasn't really like a huge problem. I feel like he 
he needs to go for his normal like items like the hood and vanguard. If he had the vanguard, actually, remember the first split where the Mirana TP top instead yeah. of the hood. If he had the vanguard, he actually might have survived that. I feel like the hood didn't help him too much. Yeah, sure, there's a there's some magic damage coming out from the clap and, uh, and the arrow, but that's about it. You know, they did a lot of physical damage with the the brulings. So I feel like it could change the direction of the game if uh, Santo played a more uh, important role in the team fights if he didn't die uh, uh, if he didn't die that one or two extra times in the early game because I felt like he needs to get to a point where he can deal with the PR with a Radiance though because I don't think any of the other heroes want to buy like a male storm or, or a battle free or anything like that to deal with the illusions it's just the centaur having to get a Radiance and he, he has a very good shot of getting it because he has started the game so well. If only he, he, he built the right items and survived the first few ganks. Yeah, the itemization has a bit of work to play there with IG falling short. Team Master take game one, a good turnaround since yesterday they lost to Ocean. We'll be back with game two in just a moment to see if IG can force this to three or if Aster get their first series of the event. So stay right there. We'll be right back uh, hopefully soon. So stay